Stop it. I said, stop it. You are eating too many of those. It's not healthy. Okay. Um, how about I design an iPhone app that lets you control when I can eat candy? Sound good? Sounds like a plan. How about calling it scolding, Surrey? Hmm, I don't know about that. How about Ring Rewards? An Apple Health Kit powered candy dispenser that will only give me candy once I've done enough exercise that day. I mean, sure, I could use a little self control, but what's the fun in that when I can spend weeks or more developing a convoluted solution to the same problem? Come see how I got it done. So this project has been one of the most engaging, but also the most infuriating parts of my life over the past you know, year and a little bit. Uh, I started this project back in January of 2021 in Mark Rober's creative engineering class on Monthly. And in that class, I was tasked to solve a problem in my life related to a bad habit. So I came up with this, which is the version one of Ring Rewards that will link up to your activity rings and only dispense candy once you've done enough activity that day. Now, if I do say so myself, this was pretty good for a one week design sprint, but I knew I could do better. So in my free time over the next couple months, I went ahead and learned how to make a PCB. I learned Swift from the ground up. All of this to support dispensing candy once I've done enough exercise. In principle, this is pretty simple, but between the irregularity of the candy and my fixation on a single idea, this took a little while. Time to go back to the beginning and see how I dealt with it just about a year ago. So to start out with, I split the project up into three distinct parts. First was the mechanical side. This is the actual dispenser that's going to release the reward once the user's met their goal. I think he's all over that. Then is the actual electronics of the project. What is going to be controlling the dispenser, be it a motor, be it something else, to actually release those rewards on command. And he's definitely all over that. Which leaves me to work on the software that's going to bring everything together and allow me to control it using just my phone and my Apple Watch. Since I want to work at Apple one day, I figured I might as well try and work some of their technology into my solution. I already have an Apple Watch which pairs with my phone to give me helpful updates on my activity levels and general health throughout the day, so I figured it was a natural choice for inclusion into this project. I had a rough idea of how I wanted the app to work, so I figured I would start out with some basic UI sketches on paper and go from there. I laid out roughly what I wanted, having the user flow through and knowing that I'd want to at some point trigger the spinning of the dispenser. But other than that, I was just kind of feeling my way through. So with an idea of what I wanted, I went ahead and just started coding. As you can see, there was actually quite a bit here. Uh, a lot of these different views, a lot of different uh, systems to kind of bring everything together. I went in and created an onboarding view to make it really simple as to how you actually get set up in the app. And I went in and made a quick settings view so you can adjust the parameters as you need to. But what took the most amount of time out of all of this was setting up the health kit integration. I ran into a serious roadblock getting things to sync up properly, so it was time to call a friend. Hey, how you doing? Really beat me over with a stick. Yeah, yeah, only if you have time. I really appreciate it. Alright, not bad. Let's see. Wow. And with that, they are definitely a genius. Time to finish out this app and get moving with the rest of the project. All right, so with that whole section done, let's talk about the app itself. I wanna show you how it actually works and how navigation works within the app. So looking at the start screen here, this is the dispenser screen, which is what you're gonna to use to actually hit the button and dispense your candy. As you can see at the top, you have your ring view, which shows your current activity uh, progress. And as you can see, it's been a pretty good day for me so far. 119%, uh, not too bad. Uh, and as you can see here, this means I have three rewards, so whenever I want to dispense my candy, I can just click this button to redeem, and that will spin the dispenser and give me my candy for that day. So, we'll move on to the other screens of the app. This is the settings uh, section of the app. So here is where you can adjust what goal you're wanting to track, be it move, exercise, or stand, and that adjusts the percentage that you've achieved so far and the number of rewards that you get. Uh, but we'll keep that as move for now and then what values should give a reward. So by default, this is set to, you're getting your first reward at 50% completion. So you got a little bit of a perk to keep you going. 
um, and you get your final reward at 100%, right? So then you'd be getting your second reward somewhere in between there. But you can set this to be whatever you want based on your personal goals. And then finally, uh, this is for the current version of the app where you have to put in the IP address of the dispenser. That way your phone can easily talk to it and actually dispense the candy. For a future update, I am planning on adding Bonjour, which will allow for automatic pairing of the devices, but not quite there yet. And finally, if you're really itching for some candy but haven't made your rings, there is a chance section. So here, you can enter a number between 1 and 20 uh, for a chance at an extra spin. So let's say, I don't know, 14. Submit that. And we didn't get it, but that's okay. Uh, and then as you can see here, say we want to max out all of our rewards. We're said that we've redeemed all of our rewards today and to try again tomorrow. So that is the basic function of the app. Um, there is also an onboarding screen and notifications which are enabled, but those are more or less self-explanatory. So this is my first iPhone app. There may be some bugs, be patient, but overall I'm really happy with it and really proud of what I learned to do. So thank you. With the app coming together, it was time to get started on the electronics. First thing I did was pick up a Wi-Fi compatible board here. Uh, and with that in place, also had to pick up a stepper motor, a driver for that motor, some buttons, some wires, a little breadboard, and something to power it all. And with that done, I wired it all up and did a first test. And I'll be honest, the first time I got my phone talking to this successfully, I ran around my room screaming like I just won the Super Bowl. So with a successful prototype under my belt, it was time to move on to the next part of this project, which was creating a custom PCB. So I started out with an ESP8266 module, which will allow us to connect to Wi-Fi, um, and just mapped a couple of those outputs to the board, one of which was for the stepper motors. And of course, the stepper motor does require a driver in order to properly sequence the pulses, uh, so this is also mapped to the board, along with an indicator LED to indicate when the pulses are being sent and the motor will turn. And all of this is powered through a micro USB port with a simple switch, uh, nothing too crazy. So, took the schematic and translated that into version 1 of the board, which you see here. It was okay, and it was kind of a good practice for just how to lay out a board like this. This is a, a double-sided board, so you can run a trace on either side. Um, but once I kind of got that going, I decided to make a version 2. Uh, a little bit more refined, I got a little more practice under my belt, watched some tutorials. And this is what I ended up ordering from JLCPCB. Oh, and what is that? I think, I think it may be here. And then I got those PCBs assembled and did a final test. Hey, look at that, it works. With the electronics done, it was time to focus on the actual dispenser itself. First, I measured some M&Ms, and it is very important to have an adequate sample size here. Very important. And with those measurements taken, it was time to move on to modeling some CAD. So I went through three different iterations of the design over the course of the last year, but what you're seeing here is version 3, which includes this little spring-loaded pusher to help dislodge any trapped M&Ms. Then while those were printing, I went ahead and cut out the acrylic front panel, so I don't have a laser cutter, but this did the job pretty well, just drilled out the holes. And once the parts were printed, I went ahead and pressed in these little heat set inserts into the plastic to hold the front panel. And here you can see that pusher now in its printed form. It is actually very satisfying to press, if you can't tell. And after pressing that a couple hundred times, it was time for final assembly. First, I went ahead and dropped in the button and the motor, both which were just press fits. Then I assembled the knob and the M&M displacement gear. Then I popped on the front panel with the alignment pegs, and after getting a nice satisfying peel, put the front panel in place. I secured the front panel with some empty screws, and then it was time to go back to version 2 and steal the board from there. And after removing those old connections, I went ahead and added new wires which will connect to the button on the new dispenser, plugged in the motor, and it's good to go. Let's save it a test. The lights are on, that's a good sign. And when the button's pressed, motor spins. Hey, that's a working device. Oh, and I never showed this for version 3, but since version 2 shares the same mounting strategy, you can see here command strips are just inserted into these little indents on the back of the case, so it can be easily mounted to the wall. Looking back, going from version 1 all the way to version 3, I can definitely see that I boxed myself into this one design. There's a surprising amount of static friction between all those little M&Ms as they go through. If there's a you know couple that are taken out, they'll just stick there and look at you and judge you. So to fix that, I added this gear system to the dispensing knob. As this rotates, the candy is disturbed, and that's enough uh, oscillation, enough force to dislodge those candies and allow them to dispense properly. All right, so that was Ring Rewards, an Apple Watch-linked candy dispenser that I've been working on for the past year or so. 
This has definitely been my most engaging, but also my most frustrating project that I've ever done, but I've learned a ton. I learned Swift and developed an iPhone app from the ground up. I learned how to make custom PCBs and learn all the electronics that goes along with that. I've learned so much in this project and it's given me the confidence to go forward and make more projects, which hopefully you'll be seeing soon. If you're wanting to download any of the models and try to build one of these yourself, all of the models with detailed uh, build materials, assembly instructions, and all of that is available on my printables.com page, linked down in the description below. And with that, I'd like to thank Mark Rober for giving me this idea and kind of prompting me on this creative journey. So much appreciated. And I'd like to thank all of my friends and family who've kind of helped in uh, along the way. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel as I'm trying to grow it. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay safe.